Welcome back for part two of this nav mesh door series. So in the last video, we set up the player and got some basic animations working. In this one, we're going to work on getting the basic door structure set up and getting some open and close animations for the door. Here's where we left off in the last video. So let's jump right back in. So the first thing I'm going to do for the door here is select it. And then I want to create a tag called door. And then I'm going to select the door again and just assign that tag to it now. Now let's make a new animator and I'm going to, just going to call this one door animator. Then just select the door and let's drag the animator onto it. Okay, and just verify that that added. So scroll down and there's our animator. And I'm just opening the animation window since I don't have it from window animations and then animation. I'll just dock it at the bottom here. Click the create button. We'll create our first clip here. And I'm just going to call this idle. This will just be the door when it's not doing anything. And we don't actually even have to do anything on this clip at all. That's all we want right here. Now just click the drop down here and we'll create a new clip. And I'm just going to call this one open. So now for the open animation, I'm just going to hit the record button and at zero frame, I'm going to make a keyframe on rotation and I'll just pick somewhere out here. And now I'm going to re rotate the door open about there should be good. So if we play it yet, yeah, that looks fine. So stop recording. So now I'm going to copy the rotation amount from the Y value here, just so I have it for the close animation and let's create a new animation. We'll call it close. Okay, and start recording and the first keyframe I'm going to put that rotation in and we'll set a keyframe here and then we just want to do a zero one at the end but I actually did a bug here where I put that keyframe over top of the first one I'll show how to fix that once I run into it so now on the animator here we have an idle open and close and you can organize them however you want here let's go back to the project folder here and we just want to select the open animation and uncheck loop time and do the same thing for close because we don't want those to loop. Let's select the door again and let's add a door controller script onto it and then open that up. And here I'm going to create a variable for the animator and get a reference to that in awake. So now what I'm going to do in here is I'm going to make a public float and normally you probably wouldn't want to make this public. You'd probably want to use a property and use a getter or um, just do some kind of better structure. But like I said earlier, this video would take forever if I spent a lot of time doing stuff like that. So I'm just going through it pretty quick. The code structure is not necessarily great, but uh, everything will work here. So I'm going to make a float and I'm going to call it animation duration. I'm going to bring back the start method now. And in here, I'm going to make an array of animation clips and I'm just going to call it clips. Now we're going to use the animator here with our reference and then dot runtime animator controller. So that's a reference to the actual animator controller on that animator and then dot animation clips. And what this is going to do is return every animation clip on the runtime controller into an array. And then we're storing it in our array that we just called clips. So if you're not too familiar with that, you can check the Unity documentation. I'll provide a link below as well. Now let's do a for each loop. And we're going to use the type as animation clip. And I'll just call this C in clips. And then this is going to loop through each of those clips that we got returned. Now let's just do an if statement and do C dot name equals open. And if it does equal open, then we know we found our open animation clip and we want to set animation duration equal to C dot length, which is the, the length in seconds of that animation clip. The one thing you may want to test using this method that I haven't tried myself is if you're changing the speed that your animation clips play at, I'm not sure if this would return only the speed of it at one times. You might have to make some kind of modifier variable and then multiply your length by that. We don't actually need update yet at this time, so I'm just going to delete that for now. 
Now let's go back to the player controller script and we're just going to make sure we get some triggers and collisions working before we do anything else. So I'm going to add on trigger enter. And then inside here we're going to do if other dot tag equals door. And for now let's just debug dot log something out. Uh, let's just put door. And we just have to add a rigid body to our player here. So let's select the player and add a rigid body. I don't know why that door is open, so just select that and set the rotation back to zero on it. And then just scroll up a bit if you have to. Let's go back to the capsule collider on our player and check is trigger. And now it's a trigger collider. Now when we run the game and walk through the door, we should see a debug message in the console. Okay, and there it is, same door. Since this type of game setup is not using real physics, it's just using click to move nav mesh and all collisions are gonna be handled by the nav mesh, there's no reason to actually need a solid collider on the player. Okay, so now that that's working, let's remove this debug.log message in the player controller and let's tell the nav mesh agent to stop so my nav mesh agent dot is stopped equals true that's going to tell it to stop moving and then i'm just going to copy the animator set bool line of code here and i'm just going to set that to false and that's going to tell it to uh, turn off the run animation and play the idle let's go to the top and make another bool here so we're just going to make a private bool called has control and this is going to be used to take away player control when we don't want them to be able to click. So by default, it's true. But let's go back down to our on trigger method here. And let's say has control equals false. So as soon as you hit a door, you lose control and you can't click to tell your player to move again. And the last thing we have to do for that is let's go back to update. And where we're checking for the mouse button, let's add and has control. This way, if we have that has control variable set to false, the user won't be able to click to move the player at that time. So when they hit a door, it's almost like a sequence of events starts. And until that sequence is done, they're not going to be able to control the player character. And let's confirm this is working. So run the game and let's click on the other side of the door. So he's going to try to walk through here. And as soon as he hits the door, he loses control. And if you start clicking around, he's not able to move. I just want to note as well, the way I'm testing everything after a couple of lines of code, this is the way I usually work on coming up with a new method like this. So I don't want to go and create 30 or 40 lines of code and then I run it and I find out it's not doing what I want. And I have to start backtracking, figure out what section, what method, what lines of code are doing it. This way it's very small portions that you're making. If you find a bug, there's not so much code and just different mechanics in the game that you have to troubleshoot to find where the issue is. So now that we confirm that's working, let's go back to that same method here. And after the animator line, I'm gonna add another one. And I'm just gonna call other.getComponent. We want the door controller. And then we're gonna call a method we haven't made yet. I'm just gonna call it open door. And now let's go to our door controller and we're just gonna make a public method called open door. Now let's go back into Unity and we wanna to go to our door controller in the animator window. So here we're looking at the idle open and close animations for our door controller. And to transition between these, I'm just gonna use triggers this time. So I'm gonna create a trigger here. So I'm gonna call this one open door and then I'm gonna make another trigger and call it close door. Now I'm gonna make a transition from idle to open. And when I select this, I'm gonna set it to use the open door trigger. And then I'm gonna uncheck exit time. And I also don't need fixed duration. And we don't even need a transition duration. We just want it to go straight from idle, which is just standing there closed to open. And now let's make another transition from open to close. And we'll set this one to use the open, or sorry, close door trigger. And do the same, we don't need the transition durations. And now from close, let's make one to idle. And this one, since it's closing, we can actually leave exit time. 
And I don't really need a transition, so I'm just going to set exit time to be 1 and no transition duration. So how this is set up to work is this open trigger is going to get triggered. It's going to go from idle to open. Then it's going to kind of sit here and wait until there's a close trigger. Then it's going to move to close and it's going to actually complete its full animation and then move back to idle. In our open door method on the door controller, all we have to do is my animator dot set trigger, and then we're going to use open door. And now anytime we call this method, it's going to tell the door to open. Let's test this out now. So we'll run the game and we're just going to click to make our player try to go through the door. And when he hits the door, he stops moving, the door opens and we can't click anywhere. So that's perfect. Let's go back to our player controller now and up at the top, I'm just going to make a private float and I'm going to call this door open delay. Now inside of the if statement, when we actually trigger the door, we're just going to add another line here and we're going to do door open delay equals. And then I'm just going to copy the, the line to get the door controller. And don't worry about that too much right now. We'll optimize and clean that up a bit later. And then we're going to put dot animation duration. So now door open delay is the actual animation length for the door opening. So we know how long it'll take now. Now I'm going to make a private I enumerator below, and I'm just going to call this delay coroutine. So this is going to be the coroutine that gets called when we actually trigger a door and it starts the sequence. And now let's call that coroutine inside of that if statement. And the first line of code I'm going to put in here is yield return new, wait for seconds, and then door open delay. So as soon as we run this coroutine, it's going to wait the length of time that the open animation takes to play. And once we finish waiting that, I'm just going to reset door open delay to zero because we're going to want to get that every time we collide with a door because if we have different doors with different animation clips to open, they're all going to take a different length of time. Let's give control back to the player. So has control equals true. Now we want the player to start moving again. So let's do my nav mesh agent dot is stopped equals false. And we also want the player to start walking or running again. So let's just do the animator dot set bool is running to be true. Let's go test this out in the game now and see how it runs. So we click through the door. He starts walking, hits the door waits for it to open and then walks through. So we're getting there. It's starting to, to take some shape. Now on the door controller for closing the door, I'm just going to make a closed door coroutine. So instead of doing the same thing we did and getting the time and everything in the animation, I don't think it matters for closing it. So I'm just going to cause a delay and then we'll close it after that. This might change on a game if you do need to actually check that and do a calculation on the close time. So if that's the case, you can basically make it the same way we made it, how it opens. So for this example, I'm just going to hard code this in to close after two seconds. You'd probably want to make this an actual variable that you can modify and set. It's not good to hard code a number like this, but we're just doing it for this video. So we're going to wait for two seconds before we do anything else. Now I'm just going to call this coroutine right after we open the door. So then after the door is open, it's automatically going to close after two seconds. So this might become an issue if, if you do have a game where you're going to have multiple different AI agents or player agents moving through doors, then you would actually need to do a check there. And you'd probably want to do a check every time you close the door to make sure nobody's in that area. And if it is, just wait before closing the door, because otherwise it'll close on an enemy. But for this example, we don't need that at all. It's only the player that's going to be moving around. So essentially in the videos, I'm just trying to give you the core idea of how you can do this system. All these different scenarios and edge cases and stuff, I'm going to leave that because everybody's game is going to be different. So if I show this, you should be able to figure out what you need to make it fit your game from here. Now, after we wait that delay to close the door, what I'm going to do is use the animator and I'm going to reset the open trigger just to make sure it's cleared. And then I'm going to set the trigger on closed door. And we just have to add door at the end of these. They are case sensitive and have to be spelt exactly the way they are in the animator. Now, just to make sure our triggers are set right, when I do the open door, 
I'm just going to tell the animator to reset the trigger for the closed door trigger as well. Just so we don't run into any issues where it's still active. So this should already work as it is, but let's go to our door and we're going to leave this mesh collider alone here, but let's go down and actually add a box collider and then check the is trigger box. And we just want it as a trigger collider. Now in just the collider settings here, scale up the Z a bit and a little bit on the X as well. And we're just going to make this trigger collider surrounding the door. So we actually trigger it when we get close to the door without actually getting right on it. So now when our player hits this trigger collider, that's going to actually start the door open sequence. So if we run the game now and click to move, you'll see he hits it and he starts early. He doesn't have to walk right into it now. So there's actually two issues with our door closing here. So let's go back to our code and I just typoed here. This one was closed trigger. This needs to be closed door when we reset this trigger. So that's the first issue and gets rid of the air. The other problem is what I mentioned earlier. So let's go back to our animation window here and select the close animation. And I just messed up that keyframe where it overwrote the one. So all we have to do, let's go back to the open animation and just check the keyframe where the door is open. So it'll be the last one here. And we just want to get the Y value of the rotation. We'll copy that and go back to the close animation. And what we want to do is put that in the keyframe at the start here. So the first keyframe we want to be open and then the last one we want to be closed. And we'll set it about the same length here. So if we play there, now our animation is working. So the code and the animator were working fine. Everything was set up. We just didn't have a close animation. So let's run the game now and let's see how this looks. And that's perfect. That's what we want for right now. And we will continue on the next video. So be sure to check that one out.